What's up guys? How are you all doing? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out how to make a magic digital eight ball that you can ask it questions and it will respond. If that looks like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on M.I. Sperry. Okay, guys, so as the intro said, we're going to be checking out uh, how to make our magic eight ball. So we're going to be looking at some of our code to start with. So first things first, we got to pull up our connection diagram. So here we go. So I created a simple little diagram here on Fritzing. Um, all the code, the schematics, the diagrams, everything it will be in the link below on the GitHub page. So make sure you go check that out if you're wanting to build one of these. Um, so basically, here's all of our connections. And yes, that right here is connected to uh, basically power. So there's a power. And then the other power is for the uh, backlight. So there's there's the normal power for the board and the chips and everything. And then there's the backlight that actually lights it up. So that's why those two are connected together. The rest of them, pretty straightforward, uh, just connects up to your uh, BLE Sense. And yes, you will need the BLE Sense board, the Nano uh, Sense board, uh, because it has onboard sensors, which is why it's called the Sense board. It actually has, I think it's got a magnometer, it's got an accelerometer, which is what we're going to be using. It's also got a microphone. It has quite a few different things uh, on it for you to kind of play around with and explore with. So um, it makes it quite a unique little package here to, to work with. So that's what we're going to be needing because it needs to detect us shaking it, right? So that's how we're going to hook it up. So there is the schematic. So let's go ahead and check out basically how to program it here. So first things first, you're going to need to download some libraries. So I am using the new IDE 2.1.1 uh, is the version that I'm using to do all of this. You're going to need quite a few IDEs. Let's see. I got, I got some notes over here on my other monitor to show you. So you are going to need to search for the Adafruit. In fact, I'm just going to put them up here on the, uh, on the page here. You're going to need the Adafruit GFX library. You're going to need the Adafruit ST7735 and ST7789 library. You're also going to need the SPI flash. You're also going to need from Adafruit as well. You're also going to need the Adafruit image reader, and you're going to need the Arduino BMI270 uh, underscore BMM150. So you're going to need those packages. Just load them. You click on your libraries here. Type in your packages, uh, whichever ones that you want to look for, all of those ones that are listed, and basically install which ones that I told you about. I'll also put those down in the description as well. Also, you're going to need the board. So you're going to look for the Arduino Nano. I just type sense. And here, there's one that's deprecated, but you want to use the Arduino uh, Embed OS Nano boards. Okay, so you'll install that one. And that should get the board installed. And then all you have to do is hook it up USB. Up here, you'll choose which board it is. It should pop up once you know your USB is connected, which mine is connected right now. So you, it should pop up. So the first thing that we're going to do first, though, is we have to edit one of the Adafruit libraries because it does not come in properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over. Let me bring this over onto the display. In your documents folder, uh, wherever you have it, uh, Adafruit or your your IDE installed, you're going to go into the your documents. Mine's on the C drive, so C documents Arduino. Underneath there, you've got libraries. Is where we're going to go next. And then inside that libraries folder, you're going to look for the Adafruit SPI Flash. Okay. Once you find that, then you're going to go into source. And then once you're in that, you're going to go to the Q. SPI, and then you're going to edit this file right here, QSPI NRF. So we're going to go ahead and edit that. Oop, popped up on my other screen. So here we go. So what you need to do is you need to add this line right here. I'll also put this down in the description for you to copy and paste. So two things though in this file, you need to comment out this first line. So this piece you want to do like I did and put two slashes in front of it to comment it out. Then paste in this line right here. That's it. Then just go up to your normal, do your file save, you know, and then you should be good to go. You'll, you'll avoid uh, compiler errors. There'll be some compiler errors for Q uh, SPI or whatever. Uh, yeah, QSPI, NRF or whatever. You'll get a bunch of compiler errors on that if you forget to do this step. So make sure that you correct that source file. I don't know why Adafruit doesn't just correct it, but 
whatever. Um, but it's only for the, I think the BLE Sense that has this problem. If you're using other boards, I think like the Uno and the Yun and the, all the other ones, that 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 one pound of, pound of fine statement uh, is fine. But since this one, I can't remember what it actually is. It's to do with the architecture of it. Um, you need that one that, that differentiates between the two different styles of, of flash memory. So now that we've done that, you should have some examples in here now. So we're going to come into our examples, okay? Because we just want to test out, make sure we get our connections uh, put together right on our display, okay? Because there could be other reasons why it won't display the magic eight ball responses and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that the display is connected uh, correctly first. So we're going to come in here and in our libraries, you're going to find this ST7735 and 7789 library. In here, there's this graphics test, okay? So graphics test is what I have pulled up right here. So as you can see, graphics test. So we got that in here. And what this is going to do is this is just going to test uh, the graphics. So we're going to send this to the board and let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and build it and deploy it. Uh, hopefully this won't take too long. And then uh, we'll be back once it gets uh, built and deployed. And I'll show you what it's going to what it's going to look like uh, on the board. I got a demo set up literally on the bench next to me. So we'll get into that. OK, guys, so here we go working. Sorry, the audio got messed up when I was basically filming, but I wanted to show you guys this is it functional. So it's going to draw some lines. It basically goes through a whole uh, barrage of different things to test out the display and make sure that it's working. So once you uh, get these images and uh, visualizations to do their thing, uh, that lets you know that it is working and everything should be good to go. All right. OK, so now we're at our custom code that we have in here. So I went ahead and linked to a few different links, like especially the link. Of course, my face is in the way. Uh, but that Adafruit link right there, if you can see that, uh, that's where I downloaded really the bulk of this code um, because it's basically their library for um, getting in and, and sending messages, pulling messages from the SD card, putting them, or not messages, but images from the SD card and putting them on the screen and things like that. So let me move myself back here. So that's basically what uh, what the main bulk of this code is is from is from Adafruit's uh, library here. So definitely want to give uh, props where props are due. Um, but anyway, we go in here. There's our pin settings and whatnot. Again, if you hook it up, hook the schematic the way the schematic showed uh, earlier, or the way it is down the GitHub, uh, you shouldn't have to fiddle with any of these. So basically, we're coming in here and we're starting up the flash, starting up all the different uh, pieces, setting our variables and whatnot. In here, we've got in the setup command, um, we're initializing our screen and setting everything up. We've even got our flash begin that's going to set up all the stuff for the SD card and whatnot. Uh, IMU begin, the TFT fill screen. And then basically after we get all of our setups done, then what we're going to do, just so we have kind of a sanity check, make sure the screen's actually working is I just go ahead and fill the screen uh, with blue and then I delay a couple of seconds and then it'll eventually uh, render the screen black. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, just so you can see that it's actually doing something. So I fill it uh, with blue. They even recommend that in their code as well. So coming on down here, we got some more uh, variable declarations and whatnot, <clears throat> image return codes and whatnot for going and grabbing the image off the SD card. So now what we're going to do is we're also initializing our the IMU, which is going to be the accelerometer. So we're initializing all of that. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab the accelerometer data. We begin that, and then I go ahead and print out those the values to the serial line just so you can see the values rolling in. That way it helps you with debug. We get into checking. So now we're going to check. Now me, my threshold for me is at two and a half roughly in any direction. So if I get a value coming from the accelerometer that's greater than in any of the directions, so either X, Y, or Z, so they're all ORed together, if any one of those values gets over two and a half, then we're going to trigger. So then we're going to go ahead and generate a random number. We're going to go in here and we're going to get our string for load pick going because we need to call out the actual picture name. And I'll show you about the pictures here in a minute. But we're going to call out the pick by name. They're bitmap, bitmap images is what you use. And so what we're going to do is we're going to call our load picture. Okay. And we're going to add to this uh, the number. Right. And up here, uh, let's see, hold on. This makes more sense if I go up here. We are initializing the load pick string uh, to have this slash pick 
in the first for picture. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to concatenate the rest of the name because I have the pictures listed out in the SD card as pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four. In fact, I'll, uh, I can show that to you really quickly. Okay, here's our pictures. So as you can see, I've labeled them pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four, all the way up to 20. And yes, it has 20 different responses, uh, positive, neutral, and then negative responses. Um, that's also in the uh, link down below if you want to uh, download all the pictures, the pre-built pictures I made. But basically, I named those that way. So that way, I can concatenate whatever random number. So I'm generating a random number between 1 and 20 because that's the number that's on the end in the pictures. So I basically append that number, concatenate that to that string, and then I also concatenate the file extension of .vmp. So then we uh, load the picture uh, to a uh, char array because we actually have to pass a uh, it's actually a character array. I'm just going to change that to an array really quick. We'll store it in ARR for array. Up top, I did declare that. I declared it to be about 16. Doesn't need to be huge. So then we come down here and we basically say what we're loading. What we do is we take the reader uh, dot draw BMP. We give it our array. We tell it that we want to draw it to the TFT screen. And then we want to place the... Uh, axis, you know, basically the cursor where it starts at zero, zero, and then begin drawing the image. Okay. So reader dot print status. We want to see if it actually uh, made it. So we're going to look at the status of it as well. And then we got a delay of 5,000. If we don't see a shake, that's the other one. So if we don't see a shake else, if we are less than two, we want to display it, but we don't want the image to go away until they stop shaking it, right? Because we don't want them to be shaking it. It displays the answer and then it goes away, you know, and then they look at it and they realize and they're like, well, it's not working. Because remember, this is going to be in a ball. So, right, you're you may not be looking at it when you're shaking it. We see if it's less than two, essentially, they've it's come to rest now. Then we're going to go ahead and set it to black. Of course, this all happens after five seconds. So they should shake it look at it and then after five seconds expires they should they should be holding on to it and then it'll it'll dump and it'll go black all right and then of course we put just our normal corner case if anything else happens then just keep the screen black which will keep it uh black while it's going through the loop uh until somebody shakes it and initiates it all right so that's our code i'm sure it's not perfect there's got to be tweaks there that can be made but i will leave that to you guys to do Okay, so here we have GIMP. So what I ended up doing was I created a canvas that was 128 by 160. That is the maximum uh, resolution that you can do on this little 1.8 inch uh, display here. Now, here's the, here's the trick, though, is exporting it out to the correct BMP. So I had to play around with this a little bit, but you do an export as. Okay, you're going to save it as let's let's I'm just going to call this one test dot bmp because i've already saved all these but i'm gonna say test bmp all right fine you hit export and then you're going to get these different options okay compatibility options you do not want to write color space information so we will check that advanced options it does not have the ability to do 32-bit colors but it does have the ability to do 24-bit colors so that's about the highest you know color swatch that it can deal with so you select 24 bits and hit export done and then um i also randomized when i named all the files i kind of randomized that too so that way i wouldn't have chunks of you know similar answers so so that is basically how you do the images and then all you do is load those onto an sd card you know preferably a eight gigabyte or less because if you do it on higher i had a 16 gig one that was just laying around that i used it uh it did not like the 16 gig one it would not uh, uh load it so eight gigs or less works just fine put all your images on that and then plug it into that little slot in the back and then all you got to do is go ahead and upload the code which i'm going to go ahead and upload turn us around to the bench and we'll see how this guy performs okay guys this was another time where the audio got messed up so i'm ended up having to dub it so i'm pressing the reset button right now to get it to go ahead and boot and get out of that bootloader mode it's going to load the blue screen first and then it'll go to the black screen it lets us know our code is functional so now we're going to go ahead and pick it up and give it a shake and see uh see if it works and there you have it and so now we're going to go ahead and head on over to using the serial monitor. So I like to use the serial plotter for this. 
It uh, allows you to uh, watch what's happening with the accelerometer. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go load up a test accelerometer. So we're going to find this up. We're going to get some code that will load up our test accelerometer, as you can see right here. Um, we'll just put that in. That way, all it does is just read the values and throw them to the plotter, basically, or throw them to the serial line. So we're going to go ahead and install that real quick. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and run it and open our serial plotter. We should be able to see it now. So now I can shake it around, and as I turn it and move it, you can see that the accelerometers uh, respond to it, and you get uh, all the different accelerations and all the different axes, so the X, Y, and Z axis. And as you can see, I can shake it, and you basically get kind of a sinusoid going on there. But I can shake it in all the different directions, and that will cause it to respond and then that way you can get your bounds set up as you can see it's kind of around two three some of them are four if i really shake it hard so it just depends on what yours is going to produce but this is how you get your bounds figured out is by shaking it around and watching this and you can figure out uh, your plus and minuses to get it set up properly so that way uh, it will trigger when you would like for it to trigger now let's go ahead and build a circuit board for it Okay guys, so I've got it mounted up to some circuit boards here. So I just took some perf board and uh, kind of made some little slots so you could plug this in and out on it. So that way you can, uh, you know, pull this off, maybe pull that off and put it back on and things like that. So just made some perf board, uh, made another one down here that will go on to the LCD screen and whatnot, and then made all my connections in between. So now we need to build a case, a basically a ball case for it. So let's go to the 3D modeling software. Okay guys, so here is the 3D model of what we're looking at. So I went ahead and 3D modeled up just a, a sphere to where I can uh, look at it. And I basically cut a hole out for the window in the bottom of it, as well as if I go over here to my bodies, turn off the top, I can zoom in. I got some bosses here. So that way we can screw our LCD screen down. And so we got everything pretty well put together. This looks like it is good to go. We're going to go ahead and slice this up using Cura. And we're going to go ahead and get it over to the Wanhao printer and get her all printed out. So let's go to the 3D printer. Okay guys, so I got it all put together here after we're done 3D printing it. I did take some resin and just some white resin from like a, a resin DLP printer or whatever. And I did put that in here and just got a UV light um, and cured it into here and then set it out in the sun for, I don't know, about an hour or so to fully cure it to give it that white uh, eight that's in there. So that came out really good. Also, we've got the controls here. I just made some circuit boards. So if you want to zoom in, I just took some perf board and uh, put that together just to house the two different things, mounted the screen to the bottom. Now this is kind of a prototype uh, base. I totally forgot the switch, so I had to cut a slot for the switch in the bottom. Uh, this will be updated in the model uh, that you guys can download uh, below. So I'll have that updated where that doesn't look as ugly. And then I just took one of those uh, USB, uh, basically chargers that is from Adafruit, link down in the description for the battery to add a battery to it, and then just put a zip tie around the battery to hold it hold it still. And then to add some extra protection, I put some foam in the top of this so that way, when we snap it together, get it all together, then when you shake it around, stuff doesn't uh, fall apart when you do it. So there we go. So guys, 
That is it for the Magic 8 Ball. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Check me out on all the different social medias. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all those different places. So make sure and check those all out. Links in the description. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.